What's up, rock stars? It's Rox with a little bit of talk about what's at the top of the blog. So let's get to it. All right, you guys. So jumping right into it, let's talk about Trevor Noah, Charlemagne the God, and Tommy Lauren. So I've already told you guys how I feel about Tommy Lauren. I think she's ignorant. And I don't like to give Tommy Lauren any time on my channel. So I'm actually kind of mad that I got to talk about her today. And only because of the uproar that an unexpected friendship that has formed between Trevor Noah, Charlemagne the God, and Tommy Lauren. So first of all, let me just say that I don't have a problem with anybody trying to curtail the ignorance of people when they talk about racism and things like that. I think that it is a discussion that, um, you know, is not always lost. But in the circumstances with Tommy Lauren, I feel personally that Tommy Lauren is um, very aware of the things that she says and that has kind of become her stick. To me, it's just rhetoric and it has gotten her to the elevated platform that she's at now. I can't even say that I 100% believe um, that she believes half of the shit she says. I'm sure she believes most of it, but some of the shit is so way out. I was just like, ain't nobody that just got a regular brain could possibly think that some of her thoughts are correct. But, you know, whatever. People were very upset with Trevor Noah sending her cupcakes after they had that discussion and seemingly like them two were now, you know, ace boon coons uh, as a, with a lack of better words. And then um, folks were very upset that Charlemagne the God actually hung out with her and kind of seemed like they were uh, cooning out with this girl after she has said so many disparaging things about black people, okay? You know, I, I don't have a problem with whatever they're trying to do. Whatever their angle is, um, if they feel that they want to have, you know, spend time with her to try to kind of pick her mind and get her to change her views, fine. I don't have the patience for it. I don't like Tommy Lawrence. I don't even, I don't even try to give her, like I said, any of my time. I'm just not that mature, <laughs> mature yet. I ain't got to the point where I feel like I can sit down with Tommy Lauren and try to get her to see, um, you know, the brighter side of things. But if that's what Trevor Noah and Charlemagne wants to do, then fine. I don't have a problem with it at all. I think Charlemagne made it worse when he said that, um, you know, if black women and Latina women would um, use their no, actually what he said is that black women and Latina women should create a platform like Tommy's so that they can um, express themselves whatever way they feel, okay? And, I, you know, that's true. It can't be anything bad in women of color, women, period, um, creating a platform from the cells for themselves where they can speak up. But I think that Charlemagne said it kind of in jest. I kind of felt like he was being sarcastic because he felt like he was being attacked um, I felt like he was being attacked equally by men and women. Everybody was very upset with him. It was just ironic that he would just point out black women and Latina women. So, But I don't know. I don't know the numbers on how many people was going off on him and all of that. So I just kind of felt like he was making it worse. But the bottom line is that Tommy Lauren is just... She is like a person that scratches on the on the on the chalkboard. Like I refuse to watch her. I haven't even seen the Trevor Noah interview and the, the all the shit with Charlemagne the God. This is strictly me going from the blogs. Okay, this is top of the blog, so I can do that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just I just uh, it would be really nice if she was able to change up some of her rhetoric, like I said, and, um, you know, kind of see things for what they really are. But I don't have any hope in that. And um, she is going to continue to do whatever makes her money, whatever elevates her platform, whatever kind of keeps her out there in front of all of these people that truly believe it. So it's like she's she she really can't change how she feels, not publicly, okay, without losing a lot of her fan base. So now it's become political, it's become business, you know, it's a whole bunch of other shit that's around it. Um, but yeah, I can't I can't worry about it. I cannot worry myself a fucking about it, okay? So, um, y'all let me know what you thought about that whole Trevor and um, Charlemagne and Tommy thing. Like I said, I still don't have problem with Trevor and Charlemagne. It just couldn't be me. Oh, child, I done, 
I was so fucking busy at work this morning, bitch. They had the nerve to be working me. So I didn't forgot to write down the damn Grammy, Gra- Grammy, Grammy nominations. <sighs> Here we go with these non-tinted windows, you guys. Tomorrow my husband is taking um, the Jeep to get my windows tinted. So <laughs> I'll be back in the old studio tomorrow. But come next week, Real Housewives of Atlanta, baby, we gonna be tinted up and real nice and dark. I wonder how it's gonna change the dynamics of... Does it look darker in here to you guys? It just seems... Uh, I don't know. The light is different but it's been so fucking ugly in Atlanta ever since I got my car it has rained every day I ain't even been able to you know feel the whole jeep experience because the shit is just it's just blah so anyway child we can see I didn't got off so the Grammy nominations I didn't write down you know I know that um the women seem to be where it's at this year a lot of female nominations black and white you know how I feel you know right on the fist pump of righteousness for all the women out there that's doing it. I know I love when we women be doing it, and if we black, that's even better. But I really only wanted to talk about the main dramatics that surrounded the Grammy nominations, at least as far as black Twitter is in, is, in, is concerned. <laughs> Y'all can't get these words together. And that is the nominations of Beyonce and of Rihanna. So Beyonce got nine nominations and is now the most nominated female in Grammy history. So good for Beyonce okay Beyonce definitely does the damn thing right Rihanna got eight and um any other time I feel like that would be great I mean Rihanna album was really really good and um I felt like she deserved every one of those eight just like I feel like Beyonce deserved every one of those nine but people were very upset with the fact that Rihanna did not get a nomination for album of the year and that Beyonce did. I don't know if we going by sales or if we just going by popularity or if this is a political you know thing. It might be a little bit all of that. Mostly probably political. But uh, definitely Beyonce's Lemonade had way more you know a whole bunch of hoopla surrounding it than um, Rihanna's album did. And I actually like Rihanna's album. I love it to death. Um, Lemonade is, you know, it was fine. I like it. I don't love it to death, though. But Rihanna's album actually took some time, you guys know, for it to grow on me. So, but I mean, it, it, no comparison there. The albums are totally different, and I like them both, and I feel like they deserve whatever nominations they got. I think people forget that the Grammys, that ain't the end-all, be-all, you guys. So if you still felt like the album of the year for you was Rihanna's album, then that's fine. Okay, but I get it. Accolades, you know stature you want to be able to say that you won this certain thing but i just felt like the fact that they was going on and on about it did her not getting nominated for album of the year kind of just dulled out all of the fact that she got actually eight nominations just the second highest nominations of everybody that was nominated for the grammys so the beehive the navy they was going back and forth you know i was watching everybody on my instagram feed that was going back and forth it was cute enough and it was you know not that big of a deal but i just was like it's just it's not that big of a deal you guys nothing to get your panties in a bunch and quiet as it's kept y'all act like Adele ain't sold 50 trillion albums um and I believe she probably will sneak in the back door and really get the nomination for album of the year if we were gonna try to put them you know those three up against each other I mean I know Rihanna's not in it but yeah you guys don't don't sleep on Adele. She ain't my cup of tea. Yeah, that old boring ass, depressing ass, you know, kind of halfway uh, country, whatever the fuck it is. I'm sorry. I just don't get Adele. But if y'all like it, I love it, right? But her album is probably going to do very well in the categories that she's nominated for, too. So you guys don't just feel like Beyonce might run away with it all, or she may. I'd be fine with any of them any of them running away with it because I feel like they all deserve it. Now, people did talk about the fact that Rihanna liked um, a certain um, post on Instagram. It was a picture of her lower half um, from her stomach on down and some little panties with some little jewels around her waist and all that. And the person was congratulating her on her eight nominations but was pissed as fuck that she didn't get the ninth nomination of Album of the Year. And um, when Rihanna liked that, of course, that went viral. Everybody was saying how, you know, Rihanna liked a shady post about, you know, Beyonce getting it and her not getting it and all that. And finally, Rihanna had to come out the next day and say, no, look, I didn't even read the post. Um, I just liked the picture and I moved on and now everybody is telling me all this, but the whole thing is we need to not put 
women against each other okay we all have done what we did um and you know kudos to the grammy academy for nominating me for the eight you know and all of that so <clears throat> i don't know if i've ever looked at a picture and liked it without really reading the um caption but maybe she does i mean rihanna probably gets thousands and thousands of shit that she's tagged in um and maybe she does do that so i don't really know <laughs> You know, if that's really what happened there, but uh, it's neither here nor there. She came out finally and said that, you know, we got to stick together as women, and that's truly how I feel. So, them the main ones that, you know, it's a whole bunch of other people. Kanye got a few, Drake got a few, uh, you know, more than a few. Um, you know, even Solange got one, I think, for best live album performance or some shit like that. Uh, um, and so, you know, but it's, it's going to be a good year for the women, okay? And we That's all that really matters to me. Now, y'all tell me how you feel about all of that. Do you believe that Rihanna should have got Album of the Year uh, nomination? Do you believe that Rihanna was being shady and liking the post? Do you believe that Adele might sneak in the back door and upset everybody? Leave all them comments below. You guys, anytime that we have to talk about Soldier Boy and his fool of fucking niggatry, I promise you it reminds me of how old I am <laughs> doing these fucking videos. It is just a goddamn shit. What is wrong with Soldier Boy, y'all? He can't get right. The nigga refuses to act like he got some fucking sense, okay? So, you know, this year, I don't know, Soldier Boy, you know, every time I feel like uh, maybe he is not in the limelight, he got to do something to put his ass back out there, okay? Because I guess being a rapper and making an album will be too much like right. I know he put that shit out with ba Bow Wow, but uh, no. He just recently coming off the beef with um, Little Yachty, a <laughs> little boat over this whole uh whether or not they were smashing and you know india love now he has moved on to quavo from the migos bitch i am mad i know all of this <laughs> oh my god you guys so anyway they say that the fallout stems from the whole india love thing and the reason why he's moved on to quavo for whatever reason he says that you know he is the only one that can hop up out of bed and turn his fucking swag on okay <laughs> him and beyonce did you guys know no, that's what she said at the end of the song Jada told me and when I was like is that what she said Jada was just like how do you not know what he says mom <laughs> just like cause she's just like they just look in the mirror and say what's up <laughs> what's up what's up what's up bitch that was my song back in the day I ain't gonna lie though hop up out of bed turn my swag on take a look in the mirror and say what's up uh, get money. Y'all, that used to be my jam. Anyway, I didn't got totally off what I was talking about. What was I talking So, yes, Soldier Boy. The nigga is mad that Quavo stole his swag. And uh, so he made this song called Beef, and it was calling out Quavo. He also invited Quavo to come over by the house, you know, say he waited six hours for Quavo to come over there, you know, and pop off, bitch. We can set it off right here, right now. Okay, that's L.A. and me, bitch. <laughs> so, Quavo ain't went over there because the whole thing is stupid. It looked like maybe Quavo was ignoring him or laughing him off, you know. It just made Soldier Boy mo upset, okay. Next thing you know, the nigga had then posted a video with him with all these guns and shit. Talking about, you know, everybody forgets that he killed somebody and that he got off because it was self-defense okay and he ain't got a problem busting the cap in a nigga ass <laughs> fool <laughs> west side <laughs> i'm gang banging and set tripping in the back of the jeep y'all <laughs> that goddamn soldier boy is so fucking stupid because you are on the instagram okay maybe we would feel a little differently if we just saw in the news that you rolled up on quavo and pulled the gun okay blast the flat jammy but the fact that you're on social media and you're pointing at the person that's recording you your big ass gun i mean the only thing i can see bad happening is you shooting the motherfucker that's recording you nigga you ain't gonna be pointing that fucking gun at me while i'm holding this phone i know the iphone is amazing but bitch it ain't stopped the bullet yet i'm just like why is he doing this and why are you telling on yourself if you did kill somebody did we know about that i i am so clueless on why the fuck Soldier Boy feels it is necessary to get up there and put on airs and act like he's this gangster when people don't look at him that way. I just, what is wrong with him? Something's fucking wrong with him. Where's mama? Do we have a mama, y'all? We ain't heard shit about the lady. 
lady, but maybe she need to sit him down because this motherfucker is crazy. I'm tired of him. I ain't got the patience for Soldier Boy. I think it is so childish. And once people just stop giving him the energy, I wish y'all would quit asking me to talk about him. It's so funny because every time I do talk about him in top of the vlogs, I edit it out. And I don't end up putting a story in there. Because I'd be like, Roxanne, 45 years old, talking about this little ass nigga that ain't got no goddamn sense. All this money, supposedly, that he has. I mean, he has more money than me. Okay, we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna shy on the fact that the boy has been successful in the past. But um, that's even more reason why you look stupid. Nigga, you got money and you got some talent. The fuck you out here with this bullshit for? What's wrong with you? <laughs> it got my damn dander up. It's hot back here. Shit, it is only 42 degrees today. So y'all know he getting on my goddamn nerves. I, I said, y'all, I, I ain't got time for too much more soldier boy. I'm not going to talk about him no more, okay? I didn't retired him, and we don't even talk about him, but he retired now. Soldier boy, get your life together. Debbie calling me, bitch. Don't you know I'm doing this top of the blog shit? Let me tell you guys about Debbie. So last night we talking, and after I got my hair done, I was at the grocery store, and I was buying some peanut butter and jelly, because I was like, I want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich when I get home. And she was like, are you going to buy the, sh the Schmuckers um, frozen peanut I said, what? She said, are you going to buy the Schmuckers frozen peanut butter and jelly sandwich? I said, what the fuck? Now, why is it that we making frozen peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? I mean, how are you depriving my god babies out there in Los Angeles the opportunity to have a freshly made peanut butter and jelly sandwich? I am so mad about that. She was like, I never make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I was just like, it is not hard. You know, you get your Wonder Bread and you put your peanut butter on one side. You put your jelly on there real nice, all soft. And I can't imagine what a fucking frozen peanut butter and jelly sandwich tastes like absolutely not i'm not buying no fucking frozen peanut butter and jelly sandwich the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> i was so flabbergasted i thought she was playing at first she was just like no girl they got... she was just like i don't buy peanut butter i was just like you don't buy peanut butter you don't lick the peanut butter off the goddamn spoon that is a rite of passage for children y'all so i don't know what to do about debbie i was so thrown off i said girl if you don't stop buying my grandchildren some damn <laughs> grandchildren <laughs> Y'all stop buying my godchildren the fucking frozen ass. No, don't do that. Don't do that. I'm going to tell you here right now and then now, my god babies out there. Y'all come on out here to Atlanta. Roxanne got fresh peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for everybody. Shit. Anyway, the fuck was I going to be talking about? Let, let's move on to the next story. Okay. So Lee Daniels, he is on a you know, the, the circuit, the tour, um, because he is trying to promote his new show, Star. And side note, I believe that's why Empire has gone to the fucking wayside, because he has now focused a lot of his attention on his newest baby, Star. But that's neither here nor there. The show is coming out, I think in a couple of weeks, it's going to be premiering on, on uh, Fox. So he's on tour. He was on The Real, and he was talking about the show. And um, Mr. Lee Daniels said that he hired this white girl by the name of Jude Demarest, she is the lead character and he felt that it was important that he arrest that he arrested her <laughs> that he hired her because the country the United States of America was we're in the middle of a bit of a civil war and that uh, he felt that you know by him imparting this position on her as lead that he would then be healing the country Isn't that nice? He went on to say that um, he doesn't embrace racism. Because if he embraced racism, that that would make it real. And um, if racism was real, then he would become an angry black man. I said, what the fuck is Lee talking about? Ain't nobody around here trying to cozy up to the bitch of racism either, but um, it's still there. And whether or not you choose to ignore it, that is one thing. But baby, I don't give a fuck if you hug it, hunch it. Racism is there and it's here to stay. I, I was just like, okay, you know how it is when motherfuckers get, try to get deep on shit and they get to saying shit don't make no damn sense. I was like, here he go pontificating. We all, it happens to the best of us. So maybe now that he has said it and he realized how stupid it is you know maybe he'll come out and clarify but uh it, it ain't it ain't too much more than the fact that you got a new show out and you this is your cast baby it ain't it ain't fixing to solve all the social ills of the world it is definitely not going to help us heal oh shit let me sit down star fix to come on black people white people y'all get 
together. Let's have a kumbaya moment and watch this show. Yeah, we not doing that. As a matter of fact, we got a real good side eye reserved for this shit. We hoping that the show does well. But when we coming off the heels of Empire, bitch, we don't know what the fuck to expect. Okay, so I'm just like, Lee, quit telling stories like that. Okay? I mean, maybe in your mind it sound good, but when you put that shit out there for everybody to hear, it don't make no damn sense. We hope the show does well. I don't have a problem with the girl being a white lead. We could come up with a whole bunch of other shit to say about why he felt that he needed to hire her, but I'm not even gonna go there. All I'm gonna say is, it's a fucking entertainment show. We're gonna sit our asses down and watch it, and then we're gonna let you know what we think. Other than that, bitch, it's still racism out there. some more people walking by trying to look and see <sighs> the kardashians real fast okay so you guys know that the kardashians trademarked their name a while back because they want to protect their interests of the name okay and make sure that nobody else can put their name out there in any other light other than what they want it to be so now fast forward to uh black china also, Angela Renee, whatever her last name is, she is um, engaged to Rob Kardashian. Okay, so she will become a Kardashian, come hook a crook, if they do get this fucking wedding off the ground. I still don't think they need to get married, but you know what? What do I know? Now, now I'm not quite sure what, what part, because I've heard two different things. I had heard that Black China was trying to trademark the baby's name, Dream Kardashian. And then I heard also that she was trying to trademark her own name, which was Angela Renee Kardashian, and that the Kardashians blocked it because, like I said, they have this trademark and they want to make sure that a motherfucker ain't trying to besmirchify. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Don King. Their name. So they're in court about this now. And um, I'm assuming that while Black China will probably be able to change her, I'm sure she'll be able to change her marital name if that's what she chooses to do. She is not going to be able to use that name in public for, you know, monetary gain. So it, I guess like if she going to be appearing at clubs and shit, ain't that what she do? <laughs> You know, her and the baby at the club, you know, getting a turn up on or whatever. She is not going to have it build like, you know, Angela and Dream Kardashian. I'm not saying she gonna bring, child, I hope she ain't bringing no baby to no damn club. But child, you don't never know these days. I'm just saying that she, but my lawyers out there, my real ones, <laughs> my real rock star lawyers, y'all let me know what is gonna happen with this. Is she going to be able to use the name or is this just going to be just a, on paper as her, as Rob Kardashian's wife, but won't be able to use it, like, in a show name, you know, won't be able, it won't be Rob and China Kardashian or something like that. So, y'all just let me know, but she's going to be a Kardashian either way it goes. I mean, we all will know that, but, um, I don't know. Why am I so out of breath? Y'all had a large coffee today. That bitch was good. <laughs> Okay, I'm not going to speak too long on this whole Mike Epps and the gay fan Norman Freeman at some comedy show. Not even sure where it was. Was it in Philadelphia? Was it in Pittsburgh? Anyway, Mike Epps was, was uh, performing at the improv. There was a person out in the audience who had like some pinkish lavender hair. And Mike Epps, you know, by the accounts that people have sent in, actually liked her hair. And he told her so. Well, he soon found out that she was not really a she and that it was a he. Everybody in the audience, including Norman, let him know so uh you know what he complimented norman on his hair and i guess he tried to move on with a set well this is when the heckling started and supposedly norman shouted out that his, his dick was bigger than mike's and mike Evans said you know what you're probably right but you don't use yours okay so they got a good little laugh back and forth he he ha ha and you know what mike Epps was just like let me move on from this okay because the nigga ain't trying to be on tmz the next day well lo and behold he ends up on tmz only because Norman recorded a video that um, starts at him yelling at the stage with his phone up in the air. Um, you know, Mike Epps in the background of him saying, Mike Epps has a little ass dick. When Mike Epps stops because he's taking pictures with his fans, he walks up to him and, you know, Norman's just like, you got, you know, you fucked up. You don't like gay people. You wouldn't take a picture with me. And, you know, then it's all this commotion and shit, right? So, 
People were very upset. They said that Mike Epps was homophobic, you know, that they treated this man um, because of the fact that he was dressed like a woman, he had the pink hair and everything, that they treated him bad. And um, that story began to take wings before we got the before story of what happened before the video happened. And what that person wrote said that Norman actually did take pictures with Mike Epps. And it wasn't until Norman wanted to do all these, I'm assuming, obscene type of poses with Mike Epps that Mike Epps shut it down. And he has a right to do that, okay? So that is when Norman got off the stage and then was upset and started the video saying that Mike Epps has a little ass dick and all that. So I, to me personally, when you start saying shit like that, like anything can go down. You cannot explain it. Mike Epps is a nigga. We know that Mike Epps has been been in some dicey ass shit and that's probably why I had believed the first story originally But you can't think that you can say shit like this about Mike Epps and that he ain't might not handle it But his boys His boys probably will to me. I thought that he was being disrespectful from the very beginning Um, even if Mike Epps said he wasn't taking a picture with him, but he did take a picture with him this is like a perfect lesson in letting you know that you really have to hold, know the whole full story before you see something. A lot of times the social media will come in on something right in the middle of it and we'll jump to all these conclusions. I am guilty of that as well. This is again one of those situations when we know we need to know the full story. And the full story here is that Norman was wrong. Mike Epps was trying to avoid that. He finally came out afterwards and said, you know what, I'm not homophobic. I work with a lot of gay people. I don't have a problem with it. But you know, motherfucker ain't about to get up here and be having their leg wrapped around me and you know, trying to stick their tongue in my ear and all this this shit either and i don't blame them so yeah um I, I you know it's more shit that happened and if you guys have a chance to watch james caldwell's video he goes way into depth and you know he's talked to people that was there and he kind of lets you know but that's it in a nutshell y'all i ain't got too much time for people um who try to go viral at any cost gay straight whatever the fuck you need to be respectful if you want to be respected and if all that matters to you is that you get your name out there by doing some old way out shit like this then you ought to expect whatever comes back your way okay so that's all i got to say about norman and everything yeah i you know um james had mentioned that he didn't even think that the bouncers should have roughed him up and yeah it's fucked up that they did but shit happens okay you you doing all of this it's a whole bunch of fussing and motherfucking get off of me and doing elbows you know you might have accidentally poked somebody or some shit tension is high people are pissed the fuck off so bitch if you catch this fade real fast and um that's what happened if you wouldn't have started all that shit to begin with, none of this would have happened. Ultimately, it was Norman's fault. But I guess they could have handled it. Everybody could have handled it different. But like I said, when you're de dealing with niggas, don't let this money fool you. Get your ass fucked up real fast. That's it. Y'all let me know what you think about Norman. Who was right there? Mike, Norman, nobody. Leave it below. All right, you guys. Jeremiah. No, uh. <laughs> Why the fuck is mama name him Jeremiah? I mean, jeremiah okay anyway y'all jeremiah was kicked off of the um <laughs> so funny you guys in my notes i got party over there <laughs> i know his name is party next door but my mind my old brain be trying to call him party over there anyway he was kicked off of party next door summer over tour because he had diva like antics now i don't know much about jeremiah fuck he sound just like everybody else to me so i couldn't tell you what his songs are i think he got that song i'm on daddy did it on my day. Da be da do da do da. Good day, just shit the bitch. Y'all know that was my jam too. Yeah, but anyway, wasn't it? That's all we. Yeah, I think that's Jeremiah. Is that Jeremiah's song, y'all? Anyway, he is upset evidently that he doesn't have top billing that he is a bigger artist than um party next door yet and still he is opening for party next door so he's mad about that they're saying and now that he's been on this tour every concert that he performs it seemed like nigga getting madder and madder okay and you know how it is when a motherfucker is hot you know he had a few um concerts where i saw he kind of cussed out the audience was just like threw down the mic and was just like fuck y'all then he come back and say no he was mad because the sound people had turned the music off in his ear and he couldn't hear then he had another situation where he said that the motherfuckers had been maced him while he was singing okay that they put pepper spray in the goddamn fog machine that is ambitious right <laughs> who the fuck came up with that 
fact that we gonna put a little pepper spray in this bitch so he can't sing. So he was upset about that. You know, he said that they were sabotaging his um, set. Then it came to the point where he just, you know, called out Party Next Door and his whole crew and said they were some old fuck ass niggas. Then to take the cake, because I guess he just ain't felt like it one day, he decided to send a double. Now, this is all alleged, but most people say that this is what happened, that he sent a double, stunt double, to Houston to perform his entire set um, and that the guy had the Kermit the Frog um, hoodie on his head and you could never see his face. I said, ain't that about a bitch? Where the fuck you just decide you gonna have somebody else double for you? I mean, but I tell you, that shit was genius though, right? You can be at the house chilling, make your money, and get a motherfucker up there to do the work for you. But um, it did not work. After that last stunt, Live Nation, Party Next Door, okay? They say even Drake, they had a problem with it. They was like, fuck it, the nigga is off the tour. The next concert, and I think it was in San Antonio, they had a sign that Party Over There would not be performing. Did I say Party Over <laughs> um, There? Jeremiah would not be performing. The nigga won't stop the fuck shit. And if you want your money back, you can get a full refund. We ain't doing no partials. You know, half your ticket back because half the, the, you know, the tour ain't there no more. And uh, that is what it is. So... Jeremiah Noah is off of the tour. He still swears that, you know, he was right and that they was lying on him and all that. But, uh, yeah, y'all. Party over there. Party next door. I guess he's finishing up his tour because, bitch, we about to be in winter now. So, summer been over. I must be really yelling in this car because I am out of breath. Let me calm the fuck down some a little bit, y'all. Shit. That coffee be having you going. And then in Quickies, the Victoria's Secret fashion show, you guys, I loved it. This was actually the first time that I actually watched the whole show. And it was just a good time of beautiful ladies up there, you know, black, white, Latina. Um, I, did we have an Asian? I think we might have had some Asian was up in there, too. It was beautiful. They have some musical guests there that uh, kind of move it along and make it more exciting. So it was Bruno Mars, who I love to death, and I think that he did a good job. But um, to me, Lady Gaga took the, I mean, she just stole the show for me. Now, you guys know that Lady Gaga is very much theatrical, and she does a whole lot. I can't say too much for her music these days. Like, I feel like her music is just, you know... Nothing like I thought it used to be. But um, she makes up for it in performance, baby. She was out there. She was giving it to you. She looked beautiful. And the poses that she was doing. There was this one part where she, she leaned her whole back like this. I mean, it was back, back, back. And she just stayed over there. And she had her arm out. Let me make sure my stomach ain't showing. She had her arm out stretched like this. And she stayed like that until one of the models came by and touched her arm. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved it. I loved it. But really the scene that she killed it is when she um, finished singing her second song. Like I said, I don't know the name of the songs. And uh, she had them big ass Herman the Mustard platforms with that thin ass stiletto heel in the back that she wears. I don't know how she fucking walks in those shoes. But um, when she turns around and she had the wings but, you know, they were sort of like damaged wings. You know, they weren't like full and beautiful. They was just like white and just kind of hanging there. She kicked them wings up. And that bitch got to walking back down the damn platform. That bitch was strolling her ass. I said, bitch, you better walk. You better walk it. Okay, so I was really just like, okay, um, Lady Gaga, girl, you did it for me. So I enjoyed it. And I thought that all of the black girls that was in it were just beautiful. And I was proud of them. And, you know, I would like to see more. But it was a good number of them in the show this time. So good for Victoria's Secret. Trump was named Person of the Year for Time Magazine for 2016. And, yeah, I mean, okay. I don't like Donald Trump. You guys know that. But he definitely was, um, he made a splash 2016. We cannot <laughs> ignore that. We're not saying that he's the great Person of the Year. We just saying that the motherfucker is the person that we all know of 2016. If you don't know Donald Trump these days, then something is wrong with you. They tell me that there's a growing up hip hop spinoff in Atlanta coming up. Okay, I didn't even watch the growing up hip hop other show. I had absolutely no interest in it. So, I don't, I, you know, this is going to be the same. I imagine, who do you guys think will be on there? Maybe Zonique, um, maybe Regine. So, yeah, I mean, I, they'll, they'll have some kids on there, but yeah, no interest to me. Mariah Carey's show is just like her to me, you know, laid back and boring. <laughs> the show was just like I was watching it. I was just like, oh, 
this is like watching paint dry. And it got seven fucking more episodes to go. I love Mariah Carey, but something about her always seems very sedated. I'm worried that when Kanye West get his mind back right, he's gonna be very much like Mariah Carey and Britney Spears. They just always seem like they under some like heavy ass medication that just kind of keeps them at like this just sort of like mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's when you just real like hmm. <laughs> I feel so silly back here, y'all. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, Mariah Carey show. Like, yeah, no. I was, whatever. She got her boyfriend on there. Something tells me that her and that guy been messing around for longer than they try to act like it has been. And that's why the fuck James Pack was like, I'm gonna beat this bitch ass up on this fucking dance floor. Fucking around with my woman. Am I cussing a lot? Y'all tell you I think the cur I think the coffee make my mouth too loose. I feel like I'm doing like reality show cursing. Let me tone it down, cause I know my saved rock stars out there be they probably sick of me with all this today. <laughs> what else? Congratulations to J. Cole and his wife Melissa. All I know is they had a baby girl. He keeps his shit real private and close to the vest, so I don't blame him. Hell, we didn't even know he was married until after he had been married, so. Congratulations to them and they brand new baby girl, whatever her name is. And then lastly, Kim and Kanye getting divorced. I don't believe it. Why are you guys hoping that a marital union breaks up just because of um, mental issues here? Who looks forward to people, um, families breaking apart? What is wrong with your life that you want something like that to happen to a family? This is the time when we need to look within. When you take your vows, rich or poor, better or worse, this is the worst part. And, um, you know, when you take them vows, you, you should take them seriously. And I'm telling you, after I done been married 18 years, you have some really, really good times, and you have some fucked up bad, bad, bad times. But if you can come through the bad times, then you have a testimony, and you have something to stand on and be proud of, and it strengthens your marriage. So I, that's what I'm hoping that happens with Kim and Kanye. I'm hoping that the naysayers and the doubters and all those who are looking for for their shit to fall through, I'm hoping that them two were able to make this shit stronger and that their family grows and strengthens from it. Okay, y'all don't give me the preaching up in here. I take marriage seriously. Okay, if you don't want to get married, that's fine. Nobody says that you have to. But when you do take them vows, I think that you should take it seriously. And work on it every day. So that's what I'm hoping comes out of Kim and Kanye's union. I'm, I, I don't want them to break up. Y'all stop saying shit like that. Then got so fucking excited in this car, forgot to order my damn... Uh, sushi. Uh, anyway, you guys, let me get off of here. We do this every single week. Make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe, and make sure you come back. Until next time, rock stars. Bye.